When you got something popular out there, inevitably rip-offs are soon to follow. And you know what's worse than having a popular video game be ripped off? You being ripped off by not having solid web security. That's right, today's episode is sponsored by NordVPN. Do you like that? Do you like that little transition? Thanks to having a VPN or a virtual private network, all of your online data as you're exploring the internet gets encrypted thanks to their super secure servers, and your IP address becomes hidden to keep all of those creepy little hackers from getting into all of your stuff. Whenever I would go out and try to get some work done while I was traveling, using a VPN was always a great idea to keep my stuff safe. It's nice knowing that all of my complaining about video games that I like to do on the internet is for my eyes and my eyes only. But hey, this year, with all of us spending most of our time indoors now, you can even trick websites like Netflix to make it think that you're in any country of your choosing and see what everyone else has that they can watch on demand that you don't. And to do all of this and a whole lot more, all you gotta do is simply click one little button. That's it. Wow, that was incredibly easy. And you mean to tell me that by going to nordvpn.com slash antude and using the code antude, you get 68% off? Only three seventy one dollars a month, plus an additional month for free? That's too good of a deal to pass up. Where do I sign up? Oh yeah. Big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video and offering such a sweet deal to all of you viewers out there. And with that being said, let's get into some ripoffs. Crash Bandicoot is such an iconic early 3D platformer. You know, while Mario went ahead and made popular the idea of collectathon platformers, which led to the world being treated to dozens, if not hundreds, of adventures over the years that throw characters into large worlds to gather any trinket imaginable that's even remotely shiny, surprisingly enough, there's still not much out there quite like Crash Bandicoot. We've certainly gotten plenty of linear 3D platformers as time has gone on, but that hallway-based design that the orange marsupial made famous? Yeah man, Crash is still your only real source for that. I suppose that's due to how limiting this idea could be. You know, there's no massive imaginative landscapes, you typically only move forward and backward, but maybe side-scrolling if you really want to get crazy. I guess developers just never really knew how to take advantage of it. Even when you look past the original trilogy, easily where that gameplay model shined the brightest, we got Wrath of Cortex after that, which definitely, um... You know, it tried to do the same thing, just didn't really do a great job of it. Still can't get over how Cortex looks like he has a million teeth. <laughs> Crash of the Titans kind of followed a similar style as well, more specifically the DS version though. That feels a whole lot more classic than its console counterpart in my opinion. And of course, we also have Crash 4. It's about time going back to what made that series awesome in the first place, and that is really sweet. But yeah, that's... That's about it. After yeah. Wrath of Cortex, Crash would go pseudo-open world with Twin Sanity. The original developers at Naughty Dog would go even bigger with Jack and Daxter. If anything, I always felt like the first Sly Cooper was a great adaptation of that hallway level design. But even then, admittedly, it's a bit of a stretch, and it doesn't even matter because it was abandoned in the sequel. But I was determined to find some games out there. They had to exist, and especially with Crash 4 on the horizon, I was definitely in the mood for it. Which, by the way, if you want to see some coverage on that game when it releases, you're going to want to subscribe, because I'm totally going to do that, and I would appreciate it. But there had to be something. There had to be games that must have released back in the day that were either influenced by or absolutely ripped off Crash Bandicoot. There just had to be. I found him! Oh yeah, and you know, you really should do a Crash ripoff video, that's such a really good idea. What could possibly go wrong? Oh man, what do you mean you're not gonna cover Barbie Explorer on PS1? Look at that, it's totally a Crash Bandicoot ripoff. I'm sorry, did you not see Eminem shell-shocked here? My plate looks mighty full enough as it is. They're all licensed games. That's kind of weird. There is this one game on the Dreamcast that's very clearly a Crash Bandicoot clone, and to my knowledge, it's not licensed to anything else, so that's nice, but I don't own a Dreamcast, so I gotta stick to what I got. Fun. This is gonna be an absolute disaster no matter how I start looking at these, so to all of you massive Lilo and Stitch PS1 fans out there, you must exist. There has to be someone out there. Let's get this started. Hey, how you doing? 
terrible, thanks for asking. Pessimism aside, we might actually have something here. Disney games on PS1 usually have a very distinct charm to them. Toy Story 2, Bugs Life, Hercules, we got some absolute classics here. Perhaps Lilo and Stitch will be one too. All of those retro games that throw in scenes from the movie in such a compressed nature as a means to pull the story along, I am all about that. The fact that no one's brought this game up in the same conversation as those previous games makes me worry a little bit, but hey. Let's check it out. Okay, so yeah, this is exactly what I mean when I talk about a Crash Bandicoot ripoff. We got basic point A to point B hallway platforming. We got the occasional side scroller. There's sometimes a chase level. There are some collectibles to get your hands on along the way. Things you gotta break to get to them. Stitch even attacks by spinning. This is pretty shameless. He can spin, burp, roll into a ball and just crash through everything in his path. Lilo, on the other hand, can perform voodoo magic? which barely ever works. These plants are literally the worst thing ever. And also, oh yeah, that's certainly one way to take down anyone who stands in your path. Just summon a big dude from the heavens. That's how I handle my problems. Something this game does that Crash didn't actually is throwing you into these little hub worlds in between levels that connect together all of the other levels across the entire Hawaiian island. This is, Pretty cool, honestly. I'm so familiar with those level portals from the Crash games, which is totally effective, but having these little cooldown locations that can lead to a few different stages is really refreshing to see, even if there's really nothing to do in them. Hey, hold on a second. There were no rock golems trying to kill Lilo in the movie. Okay, we got aliens. Yeah, that makes sense. There's the big detective dude. I remember him. Myrtle is in here as a boss that you have to race, and yeah, that totally makes sense. I definitely don't recall stone golems tossing lava rocks at a small girl trying to kill her from the movie. Yeah, no, gotta tell you, that part does not ring a bell. Oh, there are so many of them too, and they all go down the same exact way. You just run around and then hit him in the back over and over again until they die. Why is Hawaii suddenly cursed with all of these rock monsters? This is definitely a problem. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Lilo and Stitch is fine. It's inoffensive. It only takes about an hour and a half to complete. There's only one level that actually gave me trouble. It ends kind of out of nowhere too, actually, but hey, we do have some hallways here, so it's a crash ripoff, all right. I guess it is better having a decent game than a terrible one, so there's that. Lilo and Stitch PS1, it's not terrible, so I can rest easy with that one. Next up, we have Donald Duck going quackers. This time for the PlayStation 2. We're on upgraded hardware here. This should be pretty interesting. It's not going to be that much better, is it? The story here is pretty straightforward. While doing some undercover intel by the looks of things, Daisy Duck gets captured and it's all being broadcasted live on television. So of course, Donald makes it his duty to save her. There's this one dude though, Gladstone, he uses the teleporter before Donald gets to do so. So for him to get his shot, he has to travel to all of these different lands to gather a bunch of shiny objects to boost the machine's power. It's as run of the mill as a damsel in distress story we can get here. I like to think in the grand timeline, this game takes place before Kingdom Hearts. You know, she started off working as a TV broadcaster, and then she becomes royalty. That's goals right there. Okay, yep, here we go. This is a whole lot more just straight up Crash Bandicoot. We may be on a newer console now, but nah, this is pretty by the bones classic Crash. Honestly, to a fault. There's like nothing original going on here. You have hallways, the side scrollers, the once in a while chase levels. And once you know the main gist of things, which doesn't take very long, nothing really changes all the way up until the end credits. There's only one main thing that kind of sticks out and it's this special move mechanic. You jump on three enemies in a row, you press a button to go into a special mode, and then you dial in a specific button combo to get this little cutscene to play out. And that's it. They do nothing. You get invincibility for like two seconds and that's kind of neat, but it doesn't help you in the slightest. I don't understand why this is a thing. This has to be one of the major draws of the game, I guess. There are so many of these that you unlock on your journey. Am I actually expected to memorize all of these combos they throw at me? There's this training area where you can check out existing combos and just see what they do, but this adds nothing. Spicy golf? I have no idea what that means, and quite frankly, I'm terrified. 
All right, let's do something a bit more unconventional here, something no one else has ever done before. Let's directly compare Donald Duck and Lilo and Stitch. Both of these are simply bland attempts at recapturing that same vibe the Crash Bandicoot games are so known for. Those titles kept things interesting constantly with the varied locales, tough main challenges with even tougher optional ones, occasional vehicle segments to really spice things up, as well as some humor. Crash legitimately dying is one of the funniest parts of the entire franchise. If Donald loses a life, well, he just gets kinda mildly upset. Oh man, he should take a chill pill. And if Lilo loses a life, we get to see a little girl cry as the screen fades to black. Finally, this is what the video game industry has been missing. I guess by pure virtue of having more frequent bad hit detection, Lilo and Stitch is definitely the more challenging game. Donald Duck Goin' Quackers is such a cakewalk by comparison. It's not the easiest game in the world. I did die a few times, but I think that's just because my brain was going numb. All I remember doing is holding forward, pressing the jump button a couple times, and then the credits rolled. Not a good look. So, for the sake of argument, I also wanted to check out the game on the Nintendo 64, just to see if it was more or less the same game, but not as good looking. I mean, for one, the cutscenes are actually done in-game, and there's full voice acting here. Hearing real voices come out of a Nintendo 64 game has always been pretty cool, so honestly, I love this. Oh man, and this UI, it so screams Rayman 2 here. It actually turns out that both of these games were made by different teams at Ubisoft and it totally shows. Then we dive into the game and... I don't know if it's just because I'm a big sucker for low polygon 3D and N64 platformers, but... I actually like this a whole lot more than the PS2 version. It controls just as well, the level designs are actually very different, the colors seem to be a whole lot more vibrant to me, the hub worlds are a little bit more interesting in my opinion. I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but the older version of this game, I would actually say is better. I will say though, there are no special moves in this version, but really, I can only use the phrase the lack of spicy golf as a game's negative so many times. I can't speak for the PS1 version, but considering that is bound to also be a low polygon 3D platformer, I'm probably gonna say it's better as well. Good on you, low poly Donald. You really redeemed yourself. Listen, much credit to Disney here, they really tried- Okay, well, I shouldn't say really tried. They did try to capitalize on Crash Bandicoot's success with two of their franchises, so that's kind of cool. The games weren't very good, but hey, still, worth a shot. With those two out of the way, though, I guess that means there's one more left. Fine. I'll do an M&M's game. I wish these guys were sponsoring me. I'm doing this for free. This is going to be the death of me. Brought to us by the fine folks at everybody's favorite video game studio, Boston Animation, here we have m and m and m shell shot. m and m shell shocked. Oh yeah, man. Nothing like a good old quality JPEG menu to really set my expectations flowing. Well, my yellow fellow, it's time these M&M's had a little R&R. R&R? &R. R &R? Is that a new candy? Okay. All right, you know what? I, I hate that I think that's funny. So it turns out M&M Minis are going out of control and they're about to sabotage the entire candy factory. And since Red doesn't want to do anything about it, it's up to you as Yellow to save the day. Oh, what was that? What is this audio design? Those boxers are so loud. Oh yeah, also we're driving by the way, so kudos. We have a vehicle segment to start things off. Yellow M&M knows how to drive. That's a scary thought. The real problem though, is nobody else can. Oh my God, people are doing supersonic speeds, driving in the wrong lanes, insane, out of nowhere U-turns, crashes happening left and right. This is a disaster movie. Crazy Taxi got nothing on this. The one positive though is I can no longer hear anything because of all the bleeding going on in my ear. So that's something. Oh, I am so done with all of the pain and torment. When is the level gonna end? Oh. Oh, it just ends. It just cuts right to the menu. I didn't edit that. It's that jarring. Oh, hey, another driving level. Cool. Can we fast forward to the actual platforming, please? All right, this is more like it. This is exactly what I wanted to see. Here's the Crash Bandicoot ripoff hallway level design that I've been dying to see. 
Oh man, okay, yeah, this is so shameless. Yellow can do a leg spin, you got boxes to break with items inside. I can't believe Eminem Shell Shocked is the closest game to Crash Bandicoot that's not Crash Bandicoot. I can't believe that. Oh, and in case you had any doubts, yeah, the game controls terribly too. Crash had such a fantastic level of flow to how he played. That's one of the reasons why Crash 2 and 3 in particular are so good, even to this day. Yellow is just so damn stiff by comparison, and there's a total lack of depth perception too, making all of the platforming way more annoying than it has any right to be. This is a video game starring some of the most famous candy characters of all time. I know I'm gonna sound foolish for saying this, but I expected more. There is no variety in the level themes either. The entire adventure after the beginning driving segment is just factory level after factory level. You cycle through different color schemes every now and then, and somehow I guess that's enough. Okay, maybe I just have to calm down. Let me just hit these boxes real quick. Oh, my mistake, those were ghost boxes. Shoulda saw that coming. The frame rate is also very inconsistent. The game runs terribly. All things considered, this is such a not fun game to play. Oops. Uh -oh. What? There was nothing there. There was nothing there! Yellow just said, eh, screw it. Guess I'll just die. Oh man, I take it back about the variety. We do have a rocket ship level. Oh, this is gonna make me sick. What the, is that a chicken? Oh. Well, it was a chicken. After every chunk of three levels, we do get to watch a cutscene, and honestly, it's the best part of the entire game. Let's be real here, the M&M's personality is part of the reason why this brand has been going so strong for decades. So in that context, these are fine. Where are your hard hats? Uh, I have an unusually hard shell. Did not need to know that. When I want comments from the peanut gallery, I'll fill out a purchase order. Oh damn, Red's a savage! That was pretty good. You may not believe me when I say this, but Eminem Shell Shocked on the PS1 is not very good. I know, truly a shocker to us all. Eminem's got nothing on Lilo and Stitch and Donald Duck, I can tell you that much. Listen, while those games may have been anywhere from average to whatever, there's nothing inherently wrong with these games trying to rip off the success of Crash Bandicoot, but at least give us something decent out of it. This is... This is a sin on humanity that proves that we are further away from world peace than we could ever fathom. In doing my research for this topic, I found out that according to the Eminem's video game wiki, which apparently exists, Shellshocked is actually a remake of The Lost Formulas, which was released a year earlier on computers, and there is something genuinely amazing and hilarious about this being considered a remake. The M&M's fanbase and the video game fanbase. There's a lot of possible crossovers there. A lot of market value can be seized with this opportunity. This was not the way to do it. Just stick to Crash Bandicoot. I mean, you already knew I was gonna say that before you went into this video, but it rings true, man. I can't believe these were the best games I could find, and they didn't even come close to matching their inspiration's quality. Maybe the Barbie game is kinda better? I'm never saying that sentence again in my life. I have an unusually hard shell.